It wasn't easy, but I stuck it out until the bitter end with the Maze Runner franchise. And you know what? I was rewarded for my efforts. Thank you, Fox. And I thank Fox because they not only spent a ridiculous amount of money on this tragically delayed final chapter, although it does tease yet another possible chapter, but I don't think that's gonna happen, at least on the big screen. But in addition to spending so much money on this final chapter, they spent it well. In fact, other studios, producers, and directors should be embarrassed or angry, depending how you look at it, that Fox and director Wes Ball made such a good-looking sci-fi movie for just $62 million. But maybe they should have spent just a little more money on the screenplay because it's real bad. In fact, as good as, as the visuals and the acting are in this movie and the directing, the script is, is equally bad, right? And it's the same screenwriter, which I find weird, T.S. Nolan, and he has also written the upcoming Pacific Rim Uprising. Uh-oh. Um, did they watch the death, the, 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 I mean, the Maze Runner movies when they were considering hiring him? And they don't even do that well at the box office. They do okay, but not what, what, one, what, uh, what one would want from the Pacific Rim films, right? It makes no sense, it boggles the mind. But anyway, T.S. Nolan keeps getting work, despite, I think, his scripts getting progressively Worse. At this point, it feels like you're watching the cutscenes of a gorgeous video game series, several games in, that you've never played before, so you're like, I don't know what's happening, but it looks cool. Um, and what is discernible plot-wise, I have to say, is ridiculously cliche. But visually, oh boy, what a treat. I want to talk about the visuals first, and then we'll get into the acting. So there are several top-notch action scenes in this movie, from the opening train heist. I mean, it's Wes Ball knows how to construct a film, even if his screenwriter doesn't know how to write the dialogue within that movie, right? And maybe to his credit, T.S. Nolan did write some, and there are clever moments, so I'm not sure who came up with those, but I, let's just say maybe T.S. Nolan's a good action writer, okay? Because uh, that's the best part of the movie. So, like, it's very important to start your movie, you know, hit, hit the audience with a bang to get them to be like, oh, maybe this move is pretty good. And that's exactly what happens here. The train heist is not only good, but it's long. It's very clever. It's well thought out. I was really impressed. And then the second half of the movie takes place in the last city, which is also really well realized. Not only the city itself, excellent world building. I was like, hey, wait a minute, let's take a, let's take a tour around. I mean, we kind of do, but I would have liked to have seen more. Um, I can't give any spoilers away about <laughs> potential sequels, etc. Uh, but anyway, Wicked's headquarters look great of what we did see. Uh, and then when the shit hits the fan, the action sequence or sequences are not only well executed, but again, very cleverly thought out. And again, it was, it was just the dialogue that was really problematic, and I think... The, the, it was interesting. The world building was good physically and, you know, and how the world was constructed. But when it comes to the actual mythology of the story, what the characters are doing, that was a mess. And again, very cliche. So it's weird to have a movie do so. I mean, there's an overlap in, you know, the, in the two areas. So it's weird that it would succeed so well in one and fail so much in another. Uh, and even though this movie is very likely to bomb, in my opinion, I actually would say it's the best Maze Runner yet. And because that's a number of the visuals are not only clever, but I have to say they really stuck with me. For instance, a car on fire that goes bouncing past the camera when they're trying to make their way through the city. That was really cool. It was like a little thing, but it really stuck with me. Also, uh, Walton Goggins' uh, Jesus Christ moment. Again, don't want to give anything away. Uh, brilliant use of a crane. You'll know it when you see it. A haunting moment at the end involving Teresa, uh, and on and on and on. A lot of, again, a lot of stuff stuck with me. And on top of the visuals, the acting was good and helped sell those visuals, even when the script couldn't. Uh, Kea Scodelario actually got me to understand the conflicted, the sophisticated, conflicted nature of her role as a potential savior, but to, to become that requires being a traitor. So I actually was like, I see the gray zone that you're existing in, Teresa, and I feel bad for you. But I can also understand why everybody's upset with you. You know, it was good. Uh, Thomas Brody Sangster is totally a junior Ben Wyshaw. Uh, Rosa Salazar, who I hated in the last movie, she really found her groove here as Brenda. And interestingly, because it's the same studio, they showed a trailer for Alita Battle Angel in front of this. And I'm very excited about that movie. And then seeing her here, and Rosa Salazar does the voice and motion capture work for Alita, uh, it made me feel even better about that upcoming film. Aiden Gillen, boy, I'm going to miss him in Game of Thrones. He's great. He has a great look. He's a very good actor, very compelling. Uh, also, uh, on that note, Barry Pepper and Giancarlo Esposito both giving this B movie their all, right? And then there's Walton Goggins. Uh, the VFX work on his face, he's infected with the virus and so he's like half decayed. 
it's better than some of the VFX work we've seen in recent giant blockbusters that spent way more money. I was very, very impressed. Uh, but as charming as Walton Goggins is, I'm a big Walton Goggins fan. While I was at first so happy to see him getting so much more work these days, the more I see him, the more I realize that with this little range as he has as an actor, a little bit of Walton Goggins goes a very long way. In fact, I would say he's in danger of becoming the new Christoph Waltz, and he might want to dial it back a little bit before he becomes a little bit overexposed and audiences tire of him. I am right on the cusp of being tired of seeing Walton Goggins, and I love Walton Goggins, so if I'm getting tired of seeing him, uh, imagine how people who aren't so uh, crazy about him feel. And then Will Poulter also returns and brings some much-needed gravitas to the movie. He's a very good actor. He shouldn't have turned down uh, Pennywise. His career is... Uh, just is just not working out, unfortunately. And then uh, Ki Hong Lee, he isn't the greatest actor, but he has a lot of heart and he certainly makes an impression in the movie. Now as for Dylan O'Brien, he holds it all together for sure with his definite leading man appeal. But as for Thomas, Thomas makes a lot of stupid decisions in the movie. And I had a really hard time understanding why anybody was following him besides the fact he's the lead character in the movie. So many times during this film, I was like, if only you guys knew you were in a movie, you'd save yourselves so much time. Because things happen that only would happen to a lead character and only happen to him because he's the lead character. There's a history of lead characters being a little bit bland. I think we're moving away from that, thankfully, but not in this franchise. Uh, so yeah, uh, The Maze Runner Death Cure is a super boring, dumb movie story-wise, but it looks so good and features some really quality acting that is a fan of this type of material, and you know if you are, if you like this kind of dystopian future sci-fi stuff, I was engaged, and I would actually recommend it, particularly, you know, during a slow movie weekend, or later on down the line, you're looking for something to stream or turn on in the background, watch on an airplane, etc. There's definitely enough here to be of value, uh, at least time-wise, right? You can decide the price point that you, you think is appropriate. Uh, and I would definitely, by the way, considering, speaking of price point, hiring Wes Ball for a bigger franchise. Everybody's looking for directors for these big, you know, Hollywood studio franchises, and I think Wes Ball should be pretty high up on the list because he did a good job directing, but he got a lot, a lot out of a small budget. So if you gave him an even bigger budget, Imagine how much even further he could go. All right, so that's my review of uh, Maze Runner, The Death Cure. I'd be curious to hear what you think of the movie. And again, there are some really nice twists and turns in it. So if you have a spoiler comment, be sure to mark it appropriately. Thank you so much again for tuning in. And you can check out some more videos right now. Hey.